have you ever wondered what are the consequences for lying before Congress? Well, as we have seen recently, nothing. They will grill you, they will showboat, but they will do nothing. And I think that's what is frustrating Americans the most right now, is the fact that these people are showboating for us, trying to make us believe that they're taking action, when really they're just grilling their buddies, right? They're grilling their buddies or somebody else's buddy, right? And nothing happens. Nothing happens. They can lie until the cows come home. You and I can't do that, of course, because we're not a part of some small-time conglomerate of people who look out for each other and cover each other's asses. That's why Sam Bankman Freed isn't locked up, right? I mean, it's going to be a while before we see him Bernie Madoff, you know? We, we're gonna, it's going to be a while, but hopefully we see that justice. But this is, you know, when you, they talk about privilege in this country, right? White privilege. I'm like, which group of white people is, is my question. Which group of white people? Because it seems like to me, the people that are screwing over this country, right? They're from a, they're very, they're from a concentrated group here, you know. And the trends and the patterns do not lie. And so, I'm not buying all this white supremacy stuff anymore in America. I think that there are a concentrated group of people whether they're a large group of people in America or a very small group of America, people, they're a very powerful group of people, and they're screwing over this country. They are, they are screwing over this country big time. And, and to me, when you look at these patterns, you know, the, the crumbling of the education system, when you look at these special interest groups and conglomerates, these millions and billionaires, you know, who are they, right? Because there are whole groups out here who are stifling free speech. They are actually on a mission to help tech companies stifle free speech. And th there are people in the government that are allowing this, and we need to be real about this. You know, the government knows that they cannot stifle free speech, but what they can do is use these side chick organizations, social, social platforms, to do that, right? And this is what is happening in this country. And so when Americans, you know, when we talk about we're fighting for our freedoms, it's like, it appears as though we're losing them. And there's a very small group of people that have the freedoms that should be allowed to all of us, you know? And, you know, I feel like there's so many distractions right now. You have the banking system, the financial systems collapsing. Why are they collapsing? Because these people are looking out for their buddies. They have no consciousness of screwing over regular retail people, right? But they're going to benefit, they're going to gain. So you have all these people from Silicon Valley, right? These executives share, selling their shares, selling their shares because they knew it was about to go down. They had the insider information, so they moved. And this is the stuff that is being allowed. What is the consequences for that? For those people, probably nothing. Probably nothing. We probably won't hear anything, if anything would happen, because the one thing they will do is get consequences in the form of, we have enough money to pay to make this go away, but we're never going to do jail time like somebody who, who uh, would commit the same crime. And that is the real inequity. Like, when we talk about equity and inclusion, you know, this is really a conversation not about race, it's about elitism. It is about elitism. These elites are the ones who have created the dynamic of social and economic inequity in this country. And they do it on many layers. You look at the education system, for example. Nobody is being taught to be competitive these days. I mean, most of the, most, when you look at most young adults, and I was trying to figure this out, like, what is wrong with these people, is because they lack real comprehensive and critical thinking education. We have muddied it down with all this social justice craziness, right? 
to the point where people aren't even intelligent to know how these things are working and how they're screwing them over. And they don't, they're not intelligent to even know how government is supposed to work. You have people arguing with me about state sovereign powers and why it's absolutely important for states to continue to have sovereign powers. And if anything, the pandemic and the federal government mandate by Biden told us what we needed to know about why states should always have sovereign power because it protects the people. So I'm not going to be long with this, but we got a lot of crazy stuff going on in this country and we need to start really singling out some of the things gone wrong. And a lot of that stems from the people who are in leadership. We really do need an overhaul, a drastic change in leadership in this country. Otherwise, we're not going to be looking too good. The future of our children is not going to be looking too good. And that's already on a lifeline because they're trying to manipulate them into all kinds of agendas. So you guys keep your prayers up. Um, I'm going to just keep on calling out the craziness. You know, this stuff is affecting all of us. And I think it's time for us to stand up and, you know, hey, you're not at silence is compliance, in my opinion. Silence is complicity. So if you're going to sit back and try to cover yourself while everybody else is fighting or whatever, you're, you're going to be the reason this country falls. And the one thing I'm going to be able to say to my children is that when the shit was going down, I did something. I took a stand at a lot of risk. And that's just the bottom line. So you guys have a wonderful day. And I will catch you in the next video.